Hi there and welcome to the 20 second workout of the 30 days of 30 minute rows. Now I'm actually picking this up right about a week after I completed the series because frankly time, work, life, family got in the way and it's important to forgive yourself when things like that happen, okay? It doesn't have to derail you, it can just be a little bit of a bump and then you can continue and you can work out what to do. In this case, it's coming back a week later to film this workout, okay? Now today's one is gonna be a very simple one. We're just gonna roll for 30 minutes at 20 strokes a minute and your pace is gonna be round about 2K plus 18 if you have a 2k training pace or it's going to be that kind of 5 out of 10 walking up a constant flight of stairs intensity you get what I mean by that hopefully by now so it's a relatively easy one so we're going to get straight into our four minute warm-up and as always we have to set up our machine so head straight to the front to the drag factor and set that to where you want it to be if you don't know where you want it to be then just set it between four and five okay because too low with the lever is not really that much of a problem too high on a clean machine is a problem that's when it can get too heavy to pull and you have to kind of break down your break out your break up whatever the break break your, your stroke in order to um, pull against that weight and that's the same advice for those that just have a resistance dial it's set it so you get a nice feel from the stroke but you don't have to like lurch and heave against it to get the thing moving next up please go to your monitor if you can and set it to eye heights so you don't have to look up and you don't have to look down and finally set the foot stretch foot stretcher height if you're able to, so that you can come into the front of the machine with your shins in a vertical position. If you're set too high, that can be a little bit tough. If you're set too low, it can be a little too easy and you can go scooting past that position, which causes power leaks and stuff, all right? Oh, there we go, that's my, my zone just connected. <laughs> <laughs> Took you a while. Um, right, okay, so we're going to do this at around about 20 strokes a minute and your power for the time being, for the first minute, is going to be enough of a push as though you were just standing up from a squat because I want you to work on the timing of your feet and your hands both connecting to the machine at the same time. I will explain. So here we start in three, two, one, and let's begin. So what I mean is that the power goes into the machine from your legs up through your body through your arms to your hands and then it connects to the machine all right simple however you need to get that timing right of your feet pressing into the foot plates as your hands connect the handle to the machine that feeling when you boom you bite into it you feel the weight of the stroke and so you want to push your feet at the same time you feel that bite and if you have a forwards tilt over your hips and straight arms as you push your legs into the machine that power surges you should feel a real acceleration as you push your feet okay so if you've got used to that timing and you think you've got the right feel you can increase that push a little bit Take it up to that 5 out of 10 intensity. So your heart rate starts to climb. Breathing rate gets a little bit faster. But you don't feel you're working too hard. Just hard enough that you know you're getting some exercise, but you know you can manage half an hour at this pace without being exhausted because this is round about the pace I want you to row today's workout at. 2K plus 18 training pace for you folks that have one, or just that five out of 10, slightly out of breath, heart rate up intensity. Okay, one more stroke here. Now let's take one foot out, put on the ground, continue rowing. So, with this one leg strapped in, it should be easier for you to roll forwards into that shin's vertical position. And easier for that forwards tilt over your hips too, because there's less fighting against you. Let's change feet. Because the springiness of your tendons and muscles can be a little bit too springy <laughs> and you're kind of working against it as you slide forwards. Pretty handy because it kind of wants to send you back again in the stroke so it can be useful but can also 
stop you getting far enough and actually cause power leaks as well. Let's not get into that today. Right, tighten your straps, feet back in, sorry, just tighten your straps, legs straight, and roll with your back and arms. So swing over your hips, then pull in your arms. So swing to pick up that initial connection of the handle to the machine, then pull in your arms, and out with your arms, and then rock over your hips. So that's important, swing, pull, push, rock. Swing, pull, push, rock. Right, let's roll to the front of the machine with straight arms and forwards tilt. And just press out with your legs. Not too hard, this is why I say press. Because I want you to concentrate on the timing between your feet and your hands connecting, but also this body position, this forwards tilt and arm straight, holding that position as your legs drive into the machine. I want you just to practice that position rather than the power. High stroke here. If you can get used to driving out the front in that position, then when you do start to add power, hopefully the two of them will roll together. So, I am gonna actually roll this one with you today instead of replaying the video from 2021. So have a quick drink, keep on moving up and down the rail, and then we'll get into our main session. Okay then, so just a reminder, today we're gonna roll 20 strokes a minute for 30 minutes and at that low intensity pace, 2K plus 18-ish if you have a 2K training pace or that kind of five out of 10 effort. The important thing to say though is that you're meant to keep this as a low intensity. So if it starts to feel too tough, back off a bit, okay? And the good trick for this is actually just to either cover the lower half of your monitor so you can only see your timer and your stroke rate or switch it to a metric that you have no idea what it means for pace. So today I've switched mine to calories. I have no idea what 1,122 calories is. So whatever I'm rowing at, fine. I'm just gonna use that feel, that kind of how it feels to be five out of 10 as my guide through the row, okay? Um, because there's no shame on these low intensity rows. Don't let your ego take over. There's no shame in rowing slow. It's all about keeping it low intensity, making sure you're working hard enough for your heart rate to be up, your breathing rate to be up, sure. But not so much that you start to feel labored and it's too tough to get through, okay? So here we go then. So 20 strokes a minute for 30 minutes at that five out of 10, 2K plus 18 pace. In three, two, one, let's go. Now, 20 strokes a minute along with 24 strokes a minute is one of my favorite stroke rates because it's so easy to keep the tempo right just by looking at the monitor or at least the timer anyway so for 20 strokes a minute you just have to count down in three second chunks one stroke every three seconds and what's even better with 20 is that it breaks itself down into the right ratio for drive and recovery. Because what you want is one second drive, two seconds recovery, a two to one ratio. Certainly for these low stroke rate workouts anyway, Once you get higher, it gets a little bit closer to one to one, but for something like 20, then one second drive, two seconds recovery. And what that does is it helps you work on rhythm and your body position. So just to cover rhythm first, If you come back to this video and watch it, or if you can pay attention while you're rowing along with me, you should spot that there's never a point when I am stopped. It's okay, technically, there's like a tenth of a second at the front of the machine and possibly the back of the machine but I'm pretty much always moving. I don't hold myself at the front in the catch. And I certainly don't pause with my arms held 
to my chest for the finish. It's all fluid. But it's with rhythm. And it's with a flow that helps your stroke and helps the momentum of you moving backwards into moving forwards again. And that's where technique and body positions really do come into play. Now don't worry, don't worry, I know I've started in serious John mode. My plan is to, <laughs> like I had a plan. <laughs> the plan I've suddenly come up with is to take you through this stuff technique etc and then talk about something else <laughs> TBC <laughs> but yeah I want to talk technique because that's the beauty of 20 strokes a minute for 30 minutes is that you get space in your stroke to think and work on your technique. I'll try to be entertaining, but quite difficult. But let's call this the one and only deep dive into technique in the whole 30 days of 30 minute workouts. Because it could well be that by the time you got to row 22, things have started to slip you maybe got lazy or you developed a bad habit thinking it makes you faster bad habits are usually pulling too early or swinging your back too early see the warm-up for them But no matter what, every time you sit down on the machine, certainly if you, through the warm up, you should be thinking best practices for technique. Are you going through the right body angles? Are you putting the power in the right way? And it's not. <laughs> It's not just me being a dinosaur and being all like, you must row this way, row the Oxford way. I don't know what the Oxford way is. And as it is, some of the things I say are likely to be contested by some on the water rowers, especially the thing of pausing at the back of the stroke but I frame it in a way that will make you a better indoor rower which will hopefully lead to improvements on the water but it's all about efficiency when you're on the machine so that you can row for as long as you want to or need to as long as you're sensible with your power output of course and then there is the power technique helps with that and then injury prevention if you row with a good technique you're less likely to get sore bits <laughs> so let's go through it then and I'll repeat some of the things I said in the warm-up just so that you can think about them as I talk about them now what will happen is I'll probably labour a point 
and that's to give you time to practice it yourself okay so when I say make sure to roll forwards with your arms straight and relaxed that's what you think about as I start to say nice and relaxed if you were to look in a mirror and you saw your triceps were popping out then you're too tense and during that little explanation is when you should be thinking am I relaxed? are my shoulders nice and loose? they're not up in my ears? they're nice and loose like a zombie so arms in front as though you're a zombie you never see a tense zombie Arr. it can help to have a slight outwards rotation of your elbows because that kind of switches your lats or yeah switches your lats on and drops your shoulders down a bit if they are hunched so you can think about that let's come forwards little outwards rotation Oop. Well, I've lost a second on the stroke rate hang on I'll catch up with you don't slow down to me there we go so arms straight and a forwards tilt over your hips and I say the word tilt on purpose because it's not a lean if you were to lean forwards you could just do this and completely crumple your upper and lower back whereas if you think tilt then it's like a pivot a hinge over your hips nothing collapses you just pivot forwards pivot and only to that one o'clock forwards pivot tilt hinge if you go any further than that then you end up downwards and your stroke will be all over the place so powerful posture and a forwards tilt and by powerful posture I mean sitting up hips tilted forwards tailbone is not tucked underneath you okay I'll show you what I mean by tucked under that's when you come forwards like this and you're kind of always leaning back that's your tailbone tucked under you whereas up tilted and that gives you the powerful connection you need to not only get the power in efficiently and powerfully but also to prevent lower back and tailbone pain that a lot of rowers who row like this end up complaining about now it can help if you're unsure about this to imagine that somehow in some unfortunate circumstance you've ended up with a carrot stuck up your backside Whew. okay 
So if you imagine that someone's done that, whoo, you're gonna be a little bit primed and tilt forwards. And then through the stroke, as you tilt forwards, and then, spoiler alert, tilt backwards at the back of the stroke, you want your posture to be powerful and doing that tilty hinge thing so you don't snap the carrot. Because if you crunched for like this, oh, that carrot's gonna disappear. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> took that a bit too far, didn't I? <sighs> but you get what I mean. Powerful, just pivot forwards and backwards over that carrot. So anyway, arms straight, forwards tilt, good posture, looking straight ahead. That's why you put the monitor up at eye height because if you're looking up it promotes an early backswing or if you're looking down at a monitor it promotes a posture collapse whereas when it's straight in front of you your chin is neutral and you remain in that powerful position. Your hands, well, your fingers should be hooked over the handle. I say over the handle. I don't want to see underarm rowing. Your biceps can get work with a dumbbell rack. So hands over the handle, fingers hooked. And what I mean by hooked is not grabbing, grasping, choking, so tense. Rah! That's a monster, not a zombie. I'm gonna be hooked. So you have an open palm underneath the handle. Your thumbs preferably are underneath the handle. I know a lot of rowers will row with the thumbs on top, but for me, that compromises power. And even three strokes in just then, I could feel tennis elbow saying oh hello am I back so thumbs under will keep the power in a straight line into the machine rather than through your elbows or sideways or whatever so hook those fingers over and that will help power transfer it will give you an extra centimeter of length of reach into the front of the machine. And because of the airflow through your hands, less chance of blisters. And all of that is just the catch position. with the addition of rolling forwards until your shins are vertical. Try not to go past vertical. Try to at least get there. <laughs> but if you go past vertical, what happens is your backside wants to escape away from you and you lose so much drive power and that's what this is all about 
everything is about drive power. So all of the stroke nonsense I talk about is just about getting you set up to put in as much power as efficiently and safely as possible for whatever stroke rate and intensity you're working at today. And with those shins vertical, you can have a small heel raise, okay? But a small heel raise. If your heels come miles off the foot plates, then either you are going too far forwards, right? Or you have poor flexibility, in which case, let's work on that. Or you have bad posture. Because again, if I do that tailbone tucked underneath me thing, hang on, here we go. So we come forwards in order to get shins vertical, I need my heels miles off the foot plates because of the changed angle of my body. Going to normal stroke. And you know how I said I was looking at calories? I had been rowing along around about 960 calories per hour. Nice and gentle. When I did that example, with pretty much the same kind of five out of 10 exertion, I dropped to 700 calories per hour. Because <clears throat> it was compromising my speed so much. Anyway, so, arms straight, forwards tilt, fingers hooked, eyes straight forwards, shins vertical, and then push your feet into the foot plates. Hold that forwards tilt and straight arms as you push, and you should hang off the handle, okay? Feel your backside go lighter on the seat as that power accelerates from your feet, through your body, down your arms, to your fingers, and then braced against the handle. And as you push that power, then makes the flywheel or water wheel or whatever spin. And the fact that it moves is why you then move backwards. And talking of moving backwards, get halfway through that leg drive in that forwards tilt, arm straight position before swinging into that backwards lean. So straight swing, straight swing. And then only when you start that swing do you finally pull in the handle to sternum height, heart rate monitor height, bra strap height. Legs come fully down, maybe not locked, but fully down before you come to a complete finish. So what that will mean is your momentum moving backwards will be quite minimal by the time you get to the back, which means you don't have to tug your feet against the foot straps at the back of the stroke to stop yourself. In fact, oh, whoops, I can spill everywhere now. Okay, right, one, whoop, two, I'm a second behind, hang on, so 
So I was just taking both my feet out of the foot straps as proof that you don't need to tug your feet against the straps at the back of the stroke to stop yourself. As long as you get legs down, then body swings, handle pulls in. All you need is your core to soak up those last pounds of momentum. Good posture at the back, remember. And then for the recovery, well, as you pull the handle in, you create a kind of spring with the tension in your muscles and ligaments. And let that spring start your arms bouncing forwards again. Still nice and relaxed, but that spring just kickstarts the return. And what you want is the pace you brought the handle in at to get back out at. And that's the rhythm. Okay, so in, out, in, out. And as your handle passes your knees, the momentum of that return of the handle is enough to rise your body up and out of that backwards lean, tilting forwards again into that one o'clock position towards the front of the machine. So arms tilt, arms tilt. Nice and fluid between the two. It's not jerky. One feeds in to the next. And then once your arms are forwards and you're tilted forwards over your hips, all you have to do is bend your knees and you will effortlessly roll towards the front of the machine again. Because remember, I still don't have my feet in the straps. They're still out. Yet, I am still moving forwards. And that's because of the momentum of my body moving forwards. The slight downwards angle of the rail and then just bending my knees. So once I get hands away and that forwards tilt, I'm not really using any muscles apart from the ones that lift my knees up. So if you're tucking yourself forwards and activating your quads, your hip flexors, your front tibular muscle in your shins. That's three muscles that have absolutely no place being used at this stage of the stroke. And so that's where it all begins again. Arms straight, forward tilt, shins vertical, eyes forwards, fingers hooked over the handle and drive. And then that, in 20 minutes, <laughs> is the stroke. Oh. And the thing is, it takes time, concentration, and more time to get the technique right. It's a process, much like building your fitness and your strength. It's a process that will come with time and concentration. And the important thing is 
Do not be down on the days where it doesn't work. If your technique is off, if you're not feeling as fit or as strong, don't worry about it. Just keep going, keep concentrating, maybe change the session you had planned that day. But don't let it derail you. Don't accept that this is now what you're like. You don't want to do that. But you just say, okay, for whatever reason, I'm feeling tired today. Or I can't concentrate. Or I don't feel strong. And then you can start to maybe analyze why. Diet, nutrition, stress, lack of concentration. You've maybe been over training. You've maybe been under recovering, which is usually what overtraining is. But nine times out of 10, it's not permanent. It's one day. This is why you shouldn't really put all of your motivation into your performance on race days. So if you have a bad 2K race, you need to frame it in your mind afterwards and say, okay, that wasn't great. Why? Don't stress. Don't make it worse. Don't let it demotivate you. But at the same time, don't put all of your motivational eggs in one 2K row basket. <laughs> we have bad days. We just have to work to have as few of them as possible. Last stroke. <sighs> so that's where I went for my <laughs> end chat. I didn't expect it to be quite as short, to be honest. But I got a little bit focused on the technique thing and kind of going over why I was saying things. And I have to apologize for the carrot analogy, but it's true. If you think you're sitting like this and then someone was to stick a carrot up your backside, you would suddenly, <laughs> you'd obviously do this and then try and get the carrot back out, but hey, oh, I was right. I knocked my water bottle over halfway through that and <laughs> spilled everywhere. Have a quick drink. Uh, maybe reseat your backside in the seat. After all, it's usually your sit bones pressing down on your glutes. That's the cause of kind of that glute pain that you get when you're running, when you're rowing. So just reseat. In fact, I'll talk a little bit more about that in the two minute cooldown that we're about to start. So you're ready for this? Just do this, run about 20 strokes a minute, pretty much the same pace you were just doing just then, to be honest. And then just gradually slow down as you get through the two minutes. So here we go in three, two, one, go. Because, right, this is where I'm gonna continue with that point. I didn't really talk about the injury or soreness side of why you think technique when I was going through today, because I realized I was running out of time, to be honest. <laughs> but, your backside is a key part of technique. So remember what I was talking about, the tailbone being tucked under you and why that ruins your posture and how that's not very good. Apart from the rowing power and efficiency point of view, what it does is if your tailbone's tucked underneath you, what happens is as you try and roll for like rock forwards and backwards, what's happening here? is that your sit bones are crushing your glutes and rolling over them like a rolling pin and just mashing over them and over them. 
because you've got such a bad posture. It's like going, Grrr! I mean, try it. It's awful feeling. <laughs> and so if you have that poor posture, tailbone tucked underneath you, but you're still trying to do that forwards lean and backwards lean, and you come off with an extremely sore backside after rowing, that's why. Now, I'm not saying that even with good posture, you don't end up with a sore backside the first few times you row. But the key there is it's the first few times you row. So if you're on for five minutes, probably won't hurt. If you've never rowed 10 minutes before, it might get a little bit, um, just you'll, you'll feel it. But then the more you row, the less it'll hurt. So do 10 minutes a couple of times, it'll stop hurting. Go to 15, it might hurt, do it again, it won't hurt. So your backside will get used to that pain if you're just pivoting. If that's your backside and you're just pivoting backwards and forwards, that pressure point will cause some kind of sensation. But the more you, you practice this and the more you get used to just quickly reseating your seat mid row, the less that pain will hurt. But if you're constantly just grinding backwards and forwards over it, you're never gonna get used to it, okay? Because it's always gonna be grinding over and it's always gonna be sore. And ow, so we don't want that. So that's why being up, powerful rather than down and slumped is just so important when it comes if you have that kind of backside pain okay right talking about uh injury prevention and soreness prevention and stuff let's get into a stretching section now if you don't have time to stretch then uh please at least stretch your quads your hamstrings and your glutes at one point um if you do have some time to stretch then you can either join stretchy john who will if you've got space somewhere you can do some stretching on he's going to take you through some uh stretches that i do or if you've only got space on the machine then join me and we'll do some stretching on the machine so put your feet back in the straps keep them nice and loose so you can brace your feet back against the straps creates a nice angle between your feet and your legs get those legs straight make sure you're slightly back on the seats so you don't want to be perched on the edge here hands in the air and then fold forwards very much like the tilt I was talking about, except you're coming a lot further. So I figure I'm, I'm probably at, no, I don't know actually, because I can't quite tell through the mirror. Am I at like two o'clock maybe, lean? If that's one o'clock, then I'd say that's maybe two o'clock tilt. That's really all I can, I've got really tight hamstrings still. So this is kind of all I can manage. Now, you can of course, you can rest your arms on your ankles or on your feet or whatever, but please don't hold on and pull yourself forwards with your ankles or onto your toes and pull you. So you can like rest your toes there, that's okay. But if you really pull against your toes to try and pull yourself forwards, you're risking actual injury rather than stretch. Okay, so let a natural stretch happen. And then if you want, after 10 seconds, or whatever, just release and then go back into it and see if you can get a little bit more of a stretch out there. Okay, that's how you can increase the stretch. But don't pull yourself forwards because I don't want you to do yourself an injury. Let's move on to the glutes next. So one leg up on the rail. Bring your other foot so that your heel uh, is on the crook of your knee or in the crook of your knee. And then pull this knee across your body so you have a straight line between your face, your knee and your foot. Hold it in place with your one arm and then using the back of the machine for stability if you wish, rotate round uh, your, your body round so that you then kind of focus down into that glute that you're trying to stretch. A little bit confusing um, if you're listening to this in the podcast. Um, but hopefully clear in the video. Now, if you are only listening to this in the podcast, I just want to do a quick shout out to uh, uh, Matthew Brown, who made me a poster, Stretchy John poster, uh, which has all of the stretches that I do here, but in a poster format. So you can go and check that out uh, and see what I'm doing. Or of course you can watch the YouTube video. Um, but the Stretchy John poster there is, uh, is a good kind of primer if either you haven't seen me do this or if you want a reminder. So if you go to my website, I don't often plug stuff, but it's not like I'm asking you to buy it, so leave me alone. <laughs> so you go to my website, go to rowalong.com slash stretching. Um, simple enough, rowalong.com stretching. Uh, you will find a page that has, uh, it shows you the poster image on that page anyway. And then, um, by the way, in case you're wondering, I have changed legs. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so it gives you the stretching poster and then also a, a, a link to download that poster PDF that you can download and print off. Um, and like someone said, it was, was it, I can't remember, was it Esther? I can't remember. I said, um, uh, I apologize because you'll watch this and go, why can't you remember my name? Um, uh, I, I'm just going to print it off, laminate it and put it in the shower 
because I always say, please don't stretch in the shower. I don't want you to slip and fall over when it comes to that stretching. Right, uh, what are we doing next? Sorry, uh, I've lost myself. No, 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 quads, there we go. That's why I'm standing up, you big idiot. So rest one hand on the monitor for stability if you wish. Oh, crikey, very tight quads today. And then flick your opposite foot up behind you so that your heel is up against your backside. And then just give a nice little bit of a pull on your upper foot to create that stretch to kind of pull back and create the, the yeah, the stretch. Can't really think of another word for stretch there, um, into your quad. Now remember, this is about your quad, it's not about your hip flexor. So if you feel the stretch is really quite high up, then chances are you've got your posture all over the place or you're pulling in a weird direction. So um, what you want is he uh, shoulders, hip, knee um, as the, the kind of a straight line, and that should help, that posture should help when it comes to um, getting that stretch into your quads rather than your hip flexors. Org. Still don't have the balance, do I? So I just swap legs again, podcast people. I still just don't have the, the, the balance here. Maybe I'm too close. I do have something right behind me, so and I'm a little bit worried about falling into it. So basically I've got, am I actually going to show you? Oh, I can't. Um, I've, I've got a different, I've got a thing called a, a Concept2 Force Dino. Um, in fact, hang on, can I? Look, I'll, I'll break TV magic here. Oh, you can't see it, oh no. Oh well, can I? Oh, you can't, you have to trust me. Hang on, let's see. There we go. Look, it's the Concept2 Dino. Ta-da, look. Oh, if I had to tell you what I'm gonna do this. Let's, let's not fake, there we go, that'd be easier. That's gonna really mess up the green screen, I know, but hey, I might as well show you it. Um, yeah, so I've got that sits there behind the green screen. Because <laughs> all of that's green. This is all green screen, I'm not really here. I'm in a studio recording these, pretending. This is why, yeah, but you know this. Right, let's move on to hip flexors next. Uh, so one knee on the ground, other foot behind you, one foot in front of you with a knee above it. Uh, 90 degree angles on both legs and then push this hip forwards. Woo. Um, it, just to keep going forwards with a good posture until you feel that stretch happen up here in your hip flexor and then you can hold it there. Just hang out in here for a while and let that stretch kind of bed in. So yeah, so the, 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 because the, the force, the Concept2 force dyno thing um, sits there, I'm always worried I'm gonna fall into it uh, while I'm doing that stretch. So I think that's what kind of throws me off balance. It's quite a handy machine. If you've never seen one before, it kind of, it breaks the, it's like a Concept2 basically, but it breaks it down into um, a push motion, a pull motion, and then a foot press motion. Um, yeah, you can't quite see it because oh, I think all you can probably see is this seat, uh, but tight. Do a search, next time you're on the internet, search for Concept2 Force Dino thing, and you'll see what it is. It's quite useful. It never really took off. Change legs, whee. Never really, well, it, it took off, but then they stopped making it in 2000 something. Well, it was 2000 something. Uh, for whatever reason, I just think it didn't. I think loads of like the fire service and whatever got them because it's quite a good gauge for how strong you are. Um, because it does give you a readout in kind of uh, kilogram, pounds, whatever's. Um, but it just from a, yeah, so they stopped, for whatever reason, that's concept two, not me. <laughs> for whatever reason, they stopped making it, and, but I've got one, because it's quite handy. <laughs> Simple as that, don't have to explain. All right, let's move on, move on to our forearms and wrists next. So hands in front of your face, brr, and then pushing them together, bring them down in front of your body. Now I've got my thumbs now in line with my heart rate sensor. Um, my forearms are pretty much parallel to the ground. My fingers are then at right angles to my forearms and I'm still pushing together. And what that does is give me a really good stretch down into my wrists and then that kind of, that stretch then, um, it's like a, a heat that kind of like blends out from my, my wrists into my forearms as well. So depending on what I've been doing is what, how I feel that sensation. So today, for whatever reason, I can really feel this in my wrists. Um, whereas other days I'll really feel it in my forearms. So a lot of times that this stretch will affect whatever you've been loading more. Don't quite know why my wrists are, which I think what I was doing last night that would have, or today, because that's all, all I've done today is this row, so I can't think why my wrists, maybe it's just, I don't know. I don't know, don't ask me. <laughs> Although I should know. Shoulders next, put your hand straight out in front of you, uh, hi, and then bring it across your body, use your other arm, loop it around, just to add that little bit of force um, to create a stretch up here in your shoulders. And then just kind of hang out here for a while <laughs> as it stretches. So, um, yeah, and then it will help. Like, again, I've said a few times, your your stretch shouldn't be that 
that kind of like, oh, that's so relieving. You're like, your, your shoulders shouldn't be so activated when you're, when you're rowing that you really feel, oh, this is so sore. Let's swap arms. Um, your shoulders are primarily there for you to hang off. Remember what I said at one point about as you push with the legs and you start the drive, you should be hanging off the handle. It's the same as, as if you're hanging off a pull-up bar where like and your feet are off the ground. You're not pulling against that bar to hang there. You kind of straighten your arms and you just the, your weight goes through your tendons and your ligaments and things and just kind of that's what keeps you just dangling from that pull-up bar. Um, hopefully, I mean next time if you don't know, know what I mean, go grab onto a pull-up bar and get hang from it and you'll you'll hopefully see what I mean. And that's kind of what happens off the handle as you drive your legs into it. Is you're not pulling against it. Your arms are straight and you're hanging off it and that force is coming up through your body into the thing so that then as you come to the back of the stroke you can then pull in. So nice and straight uh, and then pull in. Um, and so that also protects your shoulders because as you're coming forwards, it's just going straight through your shoulders, through your arms, into the, into the machine. Um, although we've just been talking about arms forwards, let's put them behind us to do our biceps and then rotate your thumbs outwards. Um, and that should stretch the long head of your bicep. Uh, and yeah, yeah, <laughs> and then give it a stretch. Now what I've just found is because I've had a really weird kind of um, in the kind of meaty part, well, actually, there, I'll point exactly where it is. Right there, it's been a little bit sore. And what I've just realized is that if I don't try and stretch my fingers out at the same time as doing this, that pain on my wrist goes away. So it's obviously a, like the tendon coming down from my pinky finger or something that's causing the pain. Which, again, is something that I want to make clear is that always investigate what's happening with your body when you're doing these kind of stretching things. Just think, is anything. If I'm getting sensations here that I shouldn't be getting, is something a little bit sore than it should be? Let's do triceps next, so hand up in the air, down your back, so it holds on like so it's down at your spine. Your elbow will be slightly up, but maybe at an angle, so use your other arm to just straighten it up, point it straight um, up to the sky, and just put in enough of a kind of a, again, the force on it so you can feel that tricep st um, stretching. Because, yeah, you, you want to always examine your body, and if something doesn't feel right, you think, right, what's wrong here? Is this something that I'm stretching it wrong, I'm using it wrong, or is there something actually wrong with it? Like, is there, like, there's obviously something weird happening with this tendon in my hand that it isn't stretching based. Yes, I niggle it when I'm stretching, but there's something fundamentally more of an issue there, so I need to kind of to, to watch that. And so it's the same with all these stretches, is that you want to pick ones that are right for you. Swap arms. Um, and if you do one that gives you any kind of weird sensation, just think, is it the stretch? Am I doing the stretch wrong? Is it the wrong, is there some other, and always kind of think about what's going on with your body. And that way, it kind of, you're, you're always analyzing what's going on. You know when something's just not right, and you don't want to then plow on through pain and maybe make things worse or make it so that you can't then come back and exercise the next day, because it's nothing worse than that, especially if you're on the roll, and then suddenly, they go, this will be done stretching. And then something, some, suddenly something happens. I mean, the worst thing that happens really, or the worst thing that should happen is that if you've had a layoff of any time, then you come back to it and you use your muscles for the first time, you can sometimes get that delay onset muscle soreness, DOMS, which is sometimes unavoidable. On a rowing machine, it's not that bad, but if you're out running and you're not run for a long time, then usually you get right up in your, in your quads, you get DOMS just because of the shock of running. Just the impact of running, your legs go, ah, and they're really sore for like two, three days afterwards. But that eventually subsides and you can move on. And that's really the only acceptable pain when it comes to working out that you should ever experience is that kind of like, this is the first time I've done this movement, therefore my muscle is going, ah. But if you're feeling like a short, sharp pain when you're working out, like something's wrong, then address that problem, okay? Whether it's that you're, you're doing it wrong, whether it's something's wrong with the muscle, address it, all right? So that's my lecture over. It's been quite a lectury uh, video today, hasn't it? Just been kind of talking to you about stroke and I'm talking to you about injury prevention and things, but it's because I care about you and I want you to be okay and I want you to basically come back for more. <laughs> See, I'm so selfish. <laughs> I want you to be able to come back for more. But, yeah, but that's it. So that's the end of the 22nd uh, workout in the 30 days of 30 minute rows. Um, now what happens next is that for the, uh, is that right? Is it 27 it started or was it 24? I can't remember. Uh, but the last week of the 30 days, I basically go back to my favorite rows from the series and kind of redo them again. Um, and because there's some in here that are just absolutely fantastic. So like I say, I've already recorded up, I've, to finish the series already, I've just come back to re-record this one. Um, so I really hope you enjoy the rest of the series. Uh, we call if you want to use a hashtag on this one let's just say um, throwback 
throw back 22 because it's uh, the row 22 because that's what we're doing is we're throwing back to 22 because I kind of had to skip it and all that stuff so if you want to use a hashtag to tell me you got this far through the video that or yeah then <laughs> then that's the one to use because okay, so throw back 22 um, but yeah I hope you enjoyed it I hope you enjoy the rest of the series I hope you've enjoyed all the ones coming up to it remember uh, I'm now it's December the 4th right now um, and uh, the 12 rows of Christmas is uh, up and happening you can just spread these 12 rows out through Christmas you can do them whenever you want you can do them 12 days from now you can do them through that kind of period Period from the 25th onwards you can do them every three days you can do only one of them it's entirely up to you but just take a look for the 12 rows of christmas playlist on this channel and please enjoy them until the next video please look after yourselves take care be well bye, -bye.